Hello, a great welcome to the series on earthquake resistant design of building and structures using ASCE SEA722. Today we are at topic number 13 and will address the importance of exponent k that appears in the equation for uh, vertical distribution factor CVX. The equation is CVX is equal to WX into HX raised to k divided by summation of w i h i raised to k for i varying from 1 to n. So before getting into the details, let me rewind the ELF procedure which we have already discussed in detail in the previous presentations. We know that the equivalent lateral force procedure ELF it is essentially a two-stage procedure wherein step 1 we compute the total base shear V as V equal to Cs into W where W is the total seismic weight. And in step 2, we distribute the computed base shear V along the height of the building using the expression Fx is equal to Cvx into V, where we know that Cvx is nothing but it is a vertical distribution factor obtained through the equation Cvx is equal to Wx into Hx raised to k divided by summation of Wi Hi raised to k for i varying from 1 to n. And we find that this equation contains an important parameter k which is known as exponent. And today we will address in details the importance of this exponent k. So the two steps are clearly demonstrated over here. In sketch 1, we have marked the total base shear v. In sketch 2, we have shown how this total v should be distributed along the story. And if you refer to this sketch, you will find that Fx is uh, the lateral seismic force that is applied at level x. Similarly, we have the forces at other levels as well. And the total story varies from 1 to n. So, let us first discuss about how the equation for the vertical distribution factor Cvx is evolved. So, if you go back to the commentary of the code, that is, referring to section C 12.8.3, you will find that the equation for vertical distribution factor CVX, it is based on the simplified first mode shape which is shown over here. And if you see this sketch, you will find that the deformed shape of the structure at any position HX is written as alpha into hx raised to k which implies that the exponent k readily defines the shape of the first mode relevant to the structure. Now if we express the deformed shape of the structure at any position hx as alpha into hx raised to k we are in a position to calculate the initial force developed at the level x which can be obtained as fx is equal to omega square into alpha into hx raised to k into wx by g wherein remember that wx by g represent the mass at the level x and omega square into alpha into hx raised to k it obviously depends on the absolute acceleration of the mass at the level x. Now having calculated the initial force fx at two different levels, we can readily obtain the total base shear V as Vb, we just sum up all these initial forces from story 1 to n. That is Vb is equal to summation of omega square into alpha into hi raised to k wi by g with i varying from 1 to n. Now having calculated the initial force fx and the total base shear Vb, we are in a position to compute the vertical distribution factor CVX at the level X, which is nothing but the ratio of the lateral force at level X FX to the total design base shear V. That is, we have CVX, that is FX, the initial force at level X divided by the total base shear VB, which finally reduces to WX into HX raised to K divided by summation of WI HI raised to K with I varying from 1 to N which is nothing but the equation for CVX as reported in ASE 722. 
So this equation simply tells us that the distribution of the total basial VB along the height is critically dependent on the parameter K, which is also known as exponent K. Now let us discuss about the code prescriptions regarding the exponent K. Now before that, I would like to add that the expression for CVX, which is given in the code, it do not account for the type of the SFRS, that's a seismic force resting system used for the structure, which also would influence the first more shape. And therefore, CVX, we can say that, do not account for the type of the SFRS used for the structure. Now, referring to the code prescriptions, it provides three set of values. First one is that for the fundamental periodic t, which is less than 0.5 second, the exponent k shall be taken as 1. And for structures with the fundamental periodic t, more than 2.5 second, k shall be taken as 2. And for any value of t between 0.5 and 2.5 second, the value of k shall be obtained by the linear interpolation. And this equation is being demonstrated in a simplified plot as shown here, wherein you will find that along the x-axis we have got the time period t in seconds and along the y-axis it is a k value. For example, at t equal to 0.5 you will find that k is equal to 1 and at t equal to 2.5 k is equal to 2. And in between we have a linear interpolation wherein k can be obtained as 0.75 plus 0.5 t. For example, at t equal to 0, you'll, at t equal to 0.5, you will arrive at k is equal to 1 and at t equal to 2.5, substituting, you will arrive at k is equal to 2. Now, it is very important to conclude from these expressions that k is critically dependent on the fundamental period t of the structure. Now, let us consider two extremes. That is a rigid structure for which we know that t will be obviously less than 0.5 second and accordingly k will be 1. When k is equal to 1, the expression for the vertical distribution factor Cvx reduces to Cvx is equal to Wx into Hx divided by summation of Wi Hi with i varying from 1 to n. What does this mean? This means that for rigid structures, the value of the distribution factor it is directly proportional to the height hx or in other words we find a linear distribution of the total base shear v which varies simply proportional to hx and this distribution is shown over here here is shown the distribution of the base shear along the height of the building for a rigid structure for which k is equal to 1 now let us inspect the other extreme value of k that is k is equal to 2 that is for a flexible structure. Substituting k equal to 2, for a flexible structure we have Cvx, Wx into Hx square divided by summation of Wi Hi square with i varying from 1 to n. And this expression tells us the value of Cvx is proportional to Hx square or in other words the distribution of the total base shear Vb along the height of the building will be parabolic. And this distribution is shown over here for k equal to 2. And you, we can say that this is a parabolic distribution. So that's all about the discussion on the exponent k. So let us come out with some conclusions out of this analysis. For stiff structures, we have smaller value of t with an associated value of k, k is equal to 1 which means that we have smaller values of inertial forces at upper stories resulting into the smaller values of story shears in the upper stories and overall we have smaller values of outer turning moment. On the other hand, for flexible structures, we have large value of fundamental period T resulting in a larger value of K, that is K is equal to 2 and k is equal to 2 would result in larger values of inertial forces at upper stories, larger values of a story shear in upper stories 
and consequently a larger value of our turning moment at the base. So this means that an accurate assessment of T is very much important for arriving at a reliable value of K which will determine the overall distribution of the base shear as well as the overturning moment at the base. So I think that that's all about this small presentation because this is an important topic so I thought of taking it separately. So thank you for listening and kindly uh, subscribe for the channel and if you have any suggestions for improvement please let me know. So that's all. Thanks a lot.